<laughs> hello, hello, hello. Hey, everybody. God bless you. This is Andrea Scott from Pregnancy Vice. Hello. I want to welcome you to tonight's broadcast. Okay, I have to set up a few things and uh, we'll be able to get started. Okay, one moment here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Greetings, greetings, greetings. Hey, Natalie, thank you for joining us, woman of God. It's good to see you. We are in for a, a good time tonight. Amen. We are going to be having Celeste Marshall on, who is going to be sharing her testimony. I'm just going to share, um, make sure I share this on our other social media channel. So just give me a moment, everybody. Okay. Hey, I'm glad to be here. Awesome. I'm glad you are too, Natalie. Hey, Miss Wilson. Uh-uh, no, a different Natalie. Okay, I'll be right with you guys. Let me put on some worship while we are waiting for our guest. Hey, Ebony, thank you for joining us, woman of God. And I just want to share this on our other social media platforms. <laughs> Peter wanted to say hi, y'all. <laughs> okay, one second. Okay. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this awesome testimony that is about to take place. I know her story is going to bless you guys. Her story was actually featured on the 700 Club. Okay. Hallelujah. Put on some worship. Thank you, Ebony. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. You gotta look. You gotta move back. Um, yeah, move that back just a little bit right there. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh-oh. No point of rest. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just worship, guys. Let's set the atmosphere for our guest. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. Ah, God is so good. God is so good. Hey, Lisa. Hey, Tina. We worship you right now, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. So will I. Yes. God is good. God is faithful. Oh, thank you. Miss Fisher said, I am not trying to have any babies, but I love to hear you speak. Thank you, woman of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory, glory. We thank you, God. I want you to know if God can do it for Celeste Marshall at the age of 40, surely he can do it for you. Hallelujah. Yes. He's an awesome God. Yeah, 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 Korabasi. Talabasa kata lalabase ketelele broshata. Haka nanamasa kata. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> God is good. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I hope she's not having any issues connecting. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love you, God. We worship you, God. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me see. Do I see her? Let me see. I don't see her name yet. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Oh, God. Yes. <laughs> we worship you, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. He's a good guy. He's a good God. Did I say good guy? He's a good guy and a good God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Kodaban Seke de de Bosa Katanana Masata. So will I. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Yes. Glory. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. Glory, glory. I want a miracle baby. Been waiting 11 plus years. He can do it, woman of God. Cut cut a Josie. He can do it. He kept a, he's able, Josie. Cut cut a la He's able, Josie. <laughs> he's able. I thank you and Peter for praying for me. I think that helped me with my cancer. Oh, I remember you. I think that um did Peter was it something related to where he works at? Is that where he met you? I think and we both prayed for you uh sometime was it last year? I think I think I think it was last year. Hallelujah. Hello, Tamron. Yes, God. Yes, God. Okay, I'm gonna um, see if she's having any trouble joining us, guys. Okay, let me see here. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can connect with her. Oh, Peter, I need your help. Um, so I'm not seeing our guest yet. Um, would you be able to? Oh, okay. Oh, I was gonna ask if you could um text her and ask her if she's having any trouble connecting. Hallelujah. So will I. Okay, let me find her phone number. Hey Thomas. Thomas, what you doing watching this? <laughs> I believe I receive, I will conceive this month in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm in agreement with you, Aisha, in the name of Jesus. According to your faith, be it unto you. Oh, I'm just, uh, I can get it for you. Let me give you her phone number. Oh, we're typing in. Like, hey, this is. No, I don't have the number yet. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm, that's fine. Yeah, yes, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. This just means it's going to be a we mighty move you, of God. Jesus. That's all that means. It's going to be a mighty move of God. So the enemy you, trying Jesus. to yeah. delay. But. Don't even God say his you. name. Don't even say his name. <laughs> Don't even say his name. Okay, let's see here. Glory to God. Hundred million times. Okay. Hallelujah, Jesus. Um. One second. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, God. Hmm. So. Hey, Nisha, thank you for joining us. We'll be starting shortly, guys. I'm just checking to see yeah, if I'm our guest is having any issues or not. You know, anything can happen with technology. Okay, this is the number right here. Okay. I'm just ask if you have any problems. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to let this go. Oh, okay. 
She says she's been waiting. Uh, Celeste Mark. Been waiting seven years. Pastor just spoke over me for the second time this month. My womb is open in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, Frida. Frida. Miss Lambert. Thank you for joining us. Hey, Nisha. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Okay. When you on Facebook Live, do um text messages still pop up, don't they? Okay. Okay, I will also send her a um Facebook message as well. This is our season nine years of trying. But thank God for peace while I stand in the wait. Amen. Amen. Hey Mary, thanks for joining us, woman of God. Hello, Celeste. I hope I spell your name correct. My name is Peter Scott. Enter your husband. You were wondering if you were having trouble logging on to the call. So, Facebook Live. <laughs> Hi, DJ I know who you are. <laughs> Driving but listening. Awesome. Okay. Let me see if she's okay, having any trouble. I see you do it again, Jesus. Hallelujah. I want y'all to be in prayer right now. Let's pray for our guest. Hallelujah. We are ready for you. Just in case you decide to text. Oh, thanks. Okura basa salalaba. Yeka salalaba sata. Oh, she invited me to join her live. <laughs> uh, hold on. Because I was there and I saw mm -hmm. you and it was live and I don't mm -hmm. know what happened. Okay, she's, she's trying to connect, guys. I'm speaking with her now. Okay. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. God. Okay, I see you now, woman of God. Okay, awesome. I'm going to bring her on the camera, guys. Glory to God. Huh? I think she's going to connect now. Hallelujah. Hey, okay, I'm going to disconnect from the other thing. Thank you, Jesus. You made it. <laughs> oh, awesome. my goodness. Okay. I don't even know what happened. My apologies to everybody that's tuned in. It's okay. We know what happens with technology. We understand. <laughs> we yes, understand. Absolutely. How are you this evening? Oh, my goodness. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm blessed. I'm blessed that you're on with us. <laughs> I know. I am so sorry for the delay. Oh, my goodness. And I saw people streaming and logging in saying that they were watching and again apologies to everybody that's watching i apologize no problem at all no problem okay i'm just gonna uh do a brief introduction hi everybody okay. um most of you guys know who i am this is andrea scott from pregnancy by faith and we have a special guest today who is going to be sharing her awesome dynamic powerful <laughs> mountain moving <laughs> testimony so our flyer said that faith moves mountains. So that's the theme Amen. for this um, broadcast for tonight. Her testimony is amazing. Uh, she was featured, her story was actually featured on the 700 Club, but that was just a snippet of her testimony. So today <laughs> you guys are in for it. She is going to share with you and I know it's going to build you up. It's going to empower you and increase your faith. I am going to let this beautiful, awesome woman of God um, just give her a brief introduction of herself, and she has the floor, and then woman of God, you can go right into your testimony. Also, before I bring her on, I want to tell you she is the author of Memoirs of a Barren Woman, okay? So I definitely want you to share your website, all your information so that people can connect with you and also be able to purchase your book. At this time, guys, I would like to present to you this awesome woman of faith, God's chosen, God's very own, Celeste Marshall. Thank you again so much for having me tonight. 
Um, mm -hmm. Again, my name is Celeste Marshall. I am from Gainesville, Georgia. I attend Free Chapel. Um, we have a Gainesville campus in Gainesville, Georgia. And um, my husband and I, we've been married for 18 years. Mm. And I tell you, we were early in our marriage. We were ready to start our family. And mm. after about a year and a half, the doctor that I was seeing said it was probably time to go ahead and um, see a fertility specialist. And I remember shortly after that doctor's visit, I was at work and mm -hmm. received the phone call that basically I suffered from fibroids, endometriosis, and I also had some polyps on my uterus. And they told me that the absolute best chances that I had of becoming a mother was to have several female organs removed and to try in vitro. And I know for women, it's, they're successful in that. Um, when the doctors told me that, though, in my spirit, I just didn't, it didn't resonate as an option for me. And financially, I knew that was something that my husband and I probably could not do. And I thank God that when I got that phone call that I was already planted in a church where fasting was the foundation. Mm -hmm. And as we kicked off our annual corporate fast, I just remember, you know, praying to God for my body to be healed and for me to become a mother. And as I'm fasting and praying every single year, God would do something that only he could absolutely get the credit for, so to speak, um, where, you know, one instance, I was at church on a Wednesday night, didn't, you know, usually sit in a section where I usually don't. And I had a friend that was with me and, um, well, let me rewind a little bit. I'm kind of jumping ahead of myself. Okay. But the very first thing that happened was we had a visiting evangelist at our church. Okay. And it was during that church service that God spoke to me clear in my spirit that I would have a son one day. He gave me the name Simeon. When I looked up Simeon in the Bible, it meant that God had heard. So I knew that God had heard my prayer and I just anticipated on when he would actually answer that prayer for me. And again, through fasting and praying each year, he would show me something. And it started again, um, as I was speaking before, a Wednesday night, we were in church. The Holy Spirit had failed. Pastor wasn't even able to preach the sermon. And mm -hmm. this woman turned around to me and she said, hey, I've got something that I'm, I need to give you. And when I looked, she didn't have anything in her hands. But what she did was took a necklace from her shirt, out of her shirt, and she gave it to me and it had the word mom on it, M-O-M. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I just began to weep and cry. And the friend that was with me, you know, she didn't know my story because when you're dealing with infertility, it's not something, unfortunately, that you feel like you can share with a lot of people, even close family and friends. A lot of them did not know that I was facing these infertility issues because unfortunately with society, there tends to be a, a shame that a woman wears, so to speak, if in fact, she's suffering from any kind of infertility or anything. So it's not anything that you publicly want to share, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But God just started doing things through fasting and praying, just giving um, me all of these signs. Um, I had a friend that took a prayer to Israel and, um, you know, it went into the wailing wall. Her and her family, um, you know, prayed for me. She also prayed for her sister to be healed. And it was just things that God continued to do. Um, every time that God spoke to me, I was either in church or at a service. And each year as I'm fasting and praying, you know, I would encounter other women that mm -hmm. was also facing infertility. And I began to fast and pray for them. And God started answering my prayer for them, but not for me. And I was like, okay, God, I'm praying for these other women. I'm hosting baby showers at work. Um, hosting baby showers for family members, you know, when is it going to be my turn, God? And I started questioning the promise that God had given me, you know, with my nieces and nephews as I, as they were growing up, anywhere they were, I was, you know, anything they were involved in, they would tell you, you know, that I was the aunt that maybe everybody wanted, but I questioned mm -hmm. as time was passing, would I ever be um, the mother that I hoped that I could be or given that opportunity to be? And so as I'm watching my nieces and nephews grow and our family is growing in that area, you know, my husband and I, again, are still just questioning when God, when, when. Mm -hmm. um, 
I was facing my third surgery in 2012. Um, and they actually told me that I needed to just consider a full hysterectomy. And immediately I thought about the promise that God had given me. And I knew that my body had to be whole in order for him to fulfill that promise. Mm -hmm. And I wrestled with that surgery. I did by the time we made it to to the pre-op on Monday, December the 10th of 2012, um, we had pretty much settled on a partial hysterectomy. And I went to the pre-op and I just cried the entire time. The nurse, she tried to console me. Um, she just kept telling me, you know, don't worry about it. Everything's going to be fine. And it wasn't fear or anything that I was feeling because this would have been my third surgery. It was just this uneasiness in my spirit. And I kept mm-hmm. trying to explain it to her. I kept trying to explain it to my husband. It was just something unsettling in my spirit about it. And um, I went, of course, like I said, to the pre-op, I left the hospital with the bracelet. The surgery was scheduled. Um, that Wednesday night, December the 12th of 2012, I went to church, still just broken, just torn about the surgery. It was gonna be scheduled that Friday, December the 14th of 2012. And that Wednesday night, um, I just remember weeping and crying. There was a gentleman in front of me. He kept looking back at me, maybe like he was wanting to say something to me or try to ask me, you know, maybe what was going on. And I felt like that was God just saying, look, I see your tears, you know, just trust me. But I went seeking God truly that night. And I absolutely needed to hear from him without a shadow of a doubt what to do with that surgery. Because if I went through it, that I just felt like I was giving up hope and giving up on the promise that God had given me. Mm. And we were there, um, pastor preached a sermon called, do not be afraid. God is in the middle. And again, that title, because Mm. it wasn't fear, it, 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 it resonated a little bit, but it wasn't the answer that I was seeking because I still continued to cry and weep during the whole service. But at the very, very end, I mean, right at the very end of the altar call, he yelled out, be still pastor did. And when he did, for me, that was confirmation of what I needed to do regarding that surgery. And that was to be still. So that night I went home, I told my husband, because I had went to church that Wednesday night by myself. Um, Usually sometimes even my brother is there, but that particular night, no one was there with me. And it was just truly, you know, my, my alone time and quiet time with God to truly seek him about what I needed an answer for. And I felt Mm -hmm. like I had gone to family. I had gone to friends. But it was just, you know, God telling me, look, trust me in this. And I went to him that Wednesday night, just completely broken, saying, Lord, please tell me exactly what I need to do. And the answer that he gave me was to be still. Yes. And um, I came home. I told my husband what had happened in church and that I felt like, you know, God had spoke to me to be still regarding the surgery. And I canceled it. Mm. And so... Two weeks later, I took my very first, well, I had my very first positive pregnancy test (laughs) at the age of 40, 10 years of being barren. And, you know, we tend to put God on a timetable. Mm. You know, the doctors pretty much was telling me, and even some family members were telling me, you know, look, let's be realistic. You know, it's 10 years you're 40 years old, you're still having these issues that not only is affecting, you know, female organs, because they said the endometriosis could eventually attach to other organs, that it was just, you know, like I said, time to do this full hysterectomy. But again, I knew that my body had to be whole in order for God to fulfill that promise. Mm, My God. Jesus. And so I went to work and it's, and I think about it now. I was at work when I received the phone call about being diagnosed with my infertility. And for whatever reason, you know, I was at work when I took this positive pregnancy test. And again, it was the very first one that I had ever had. You know, I wasn't one of the women that suffered from miscarriages or had, Mm -hmm. you know, prior pregnancy or anything like that. 
I mean, wow. it was truly, you know, my like first your, your first pregnancy. Yes, my wow. first pregnancy, first positive pregnancy test. And again, mm -hmm. all of that was a 10 year wait, believing God with this promise that he had given me and just remaining steadfast to, to his word and his promise. And, you know, don't get me wrong. Over the years, I questioned what I had heard from God. You know, he promised mm -hmm. me this son. Mm -hmm. And as time passed and, you know, I'm getting closer to 40, I was just like, God, you know, did I truly hear from you? And if I didn't mm -hmm. remove this desire from my heart, and he wow. never did. If anything, the desire just continued to grow. And he just, again, just kept giving me confirmation through fasting and praying. And I just mm -hmm. challenge anyone, you know, if you haven't fasted about your situation, then, you know, go to God in that intimate time, hear from him. Because again, it was during those, those fasting periods that, mm -hmm. that I know I heard from God, received confirmation, him just telling me, you know, to be patient, wait on him. His timing is always perfect. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. What an awesome God. Jesus. I'm just smiling cheek to cheek. <laughs> <laughs> just, just the thought of, you know, what, what God has done and, and what he can do and how when it looks impossible, he got the last word. And uh, it really just me, everything that you said. And, and what you said really speaks. Um, it definitely speaks for those who, um, like you were saying, you weren't one of those individuals who had gotten pregnant before or had a miscarriage. Like it was your very first pregnancy. And so there's some women out there, they've never conceived. They've never seen a big right. fat positive before. And so this yeah. goes to show you, uh, reg regardless of what the case may be, um, whatever God got to do to get the promise to you, you know, he'll, he'll do it. Faith moves mountains. And I like how you've said that um, you guys were doing a lot of fasting and prayer. Yes. Yeah. Because that, that definitely is one of the keys because in the Bible, it does say that some things only come, only come by prayer through fasting and prayer. fasting. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Right, right, right. <laughs> so come by some come by prayer and fasting. So um let me see, what else should I ask you? So tell us, I don't know if you were uh near the end of your testimony. I, I probably just interjected a little bit. Um <laughs> definitely share share about share about your your son and um you know just a, get share with us a few things about him and stuff like that. I you know, I tell you, I look at my son every single day in my home and, you know, it's just a reminder that God can absolutely do a miracle. And I look at him, my heart is full. Um, he has brought so much joy to my life. Mm. And again, you know, I was always involved with my nieces and nephews and, and everyone thought, you know, that that was who I was, was just this aunt that was great to my nieces and nephews. And a lot of people didn't know the strong desire that I had to be a mom. People thought that that was, you know, what I wanted and what I was okay with doing, but it wasn't. I had that desire and mm. I knew the promise that God had given me. But, you know, I look at him, my son daily, and I just know, like I said, that absolutely nothing is impossible with God. And mm. even though during that time, you know, my faith had dwindled down to that, the size of a mustard seed, and mm -hmm. we know how small it is, right? but we also know that it can absolutely move mountains. Yeah. And even with that faith, it's still enough for God to do something miraculous. Mm, my God. Um, you know, I'm going to put you on the spot, woman of God. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you don't mind... Would you do us the honor of taking a few prayer requests of some of the women that are on this uh, live broadcast? I know that um, they'll definitely want to be able to put their faith together with your faith, because I know if God has moved in your life, sure yeah. enough, he will really move in their lives. Um, and you could just be led, led by the Holy Spirit. You can call out names, whatever God gives you. I know he speaks to you and um, 
I know that when you pray for them, or you can do a corporate prayer, um, I know that when you pray for them, something on the inside is going to ignite on the inside of them. Yes. And, you know, again, I thank everybody that is tuned in. And, um, you know, I want to link my faith with women that are barren. You know, God's given me this platform to reach women that um, are suffering from infertility. But God has also shown me that with this platform, I'm able to reach barren people. Mm. And because if you look at barren and we think about barren, we immediately think about the barren woman in the Bible. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the definition, it can be something that's desolate, unproductive, unfruitful, a yeah. dry place. So there may be some barren areas in your life, your relationship with God, your marriage, your finances, anything that's unproductive or unfruitful that mm -hmm. could be hindering, so to speak, you know, your prayers. And again, through fasting, there's this intimacy that can break mm -hmm. through and penetrate into areas and you hear God, um, you know, with these anointed ears, so to speak, where you can hear his voice and the Holy Spirit can speak to you through him and, you know, be able to help you in your situations, whatever it is that you're dealing with. But with the women that are facing infertility, and it seems absolutely impossible, mm -hmm. you know, I will um, obviously go back and, and look at this um, video and be in prayer and stand in agreement with these women. But corporately, I would love to pray, um, you know, for everyone that's tuned in and even people that may come back and again, watch the video. Mm -hmm. Dear Lord, we come before you tonight, God. And we lift up our barren area to you, Lord. God, I ask that you be with these women, Lord, that has dealt with this infertility, Lord. And we know that society tends to put a shame, so to speak, God, on this, on this issue. But Lord, we just ask that you empower them, give them the strength that they need, oh God, to seek you earnestly, oh Lord. And while they're dealing with this, oh God, that their relationship with you shall flourish, Lord, that they'll learn to lean on you, God, and cast all their cares on you, Lord. And God, we just stand in agreement, God, with the women, Lord, that truly desire God in their heart. And they have a promise, oh God, because just like me, Lord, when I got the promise, Lord, there are women that have a promise, God, and we just ask that you be with them, oh God, during this process, God. Allow them the strength, God, to wait while you, in your perfect timing, in your perfect will, God, fulfill the promise in their life, God. And Lord, we just ask that you continue to be with us daily, God. Strengthen us, Lord. We ask that you lift up our families, God. We know that marriages are impacted, Lord, in ways when you're dealing with infertility, Lord. And again, we just ask that you gird up these women, Lord, and strengthen them, God, and be with them during these days, Lord, as they walk and seek you. And God, again, let it be a time where they are nourishing their relationship with you, God. And Lord, we just ask that you be with us, God, as we continue this journey, Lord. And even Andrea and I, as, as we are mothers, God, we're still in this journey of faith, Lord, with these women, because yes, we Lord. Yes, Lord. God. And Lord, we just ask that you continue to strengthen us, God, and use us however you see fit, Lord, as willing vessels. And it's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. That was a very heartfelt prayer. Um, my husband wants to say hello. Hey, hey this is Peter. How you doing? Hey, good. Nice to meet you. Thank you guys so much for the opportunity to come and share. No problem. Anytime. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being obedient to the Lord and for being able to come out and share your testimony. Thank you so much. Amen. Yes. Amen. God is good. God is faithful. Um, what keeps popping up in my mind was how you kept saying how God gave you a promise and you held on to it. Yeah. Yeah. So people of God, the Lord has given you a promise. The Lord has given you a word. He's giving you a prophecy. <laughs> um, like when I was telling you on the phone, uh, Celeste, uh, with those prophecies, I thought that some of them missed it. I thought they missed the mark. <laughs> thought that they were off because uh, 
God kept coming. These people kept coming to me with these prophet prophecies talking about children. And I'm mm-hmm. expected it to happen like yesterday and it didn't, but God had a promise and uh, my infertility had an expiration date just like yours did. We had a promise from God and um, it came to pass. He's a faithful, he's faithful to his word. So you can find his promises in the, in the Bible and scripture. And <laughs> they want to say hi. Hi. Oh, this is I know I tried to get my son to come on and he was like, no. <laughs> Aww, it would have been awesome to see him. Hi. but. Oh, Joseph, I want to say hi too, guys. Hey. Hey. <laughs> God is faithful. Love you. Oh, he said, I love you. He's so sweet. He makes the bare woman to keep house and be a joyful mother of children. Woman of God, share with us, um, how can people purchase your book? Um, I have my website, memoirsofabarenwoman.com. I'm on Facebook under C period Celeste Marshall, um, but Amazon, uh, Barnes and Nobles, any of those you can, it's also available in an ebook. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, I've got some information on my Facebook page. They can direct message me if someone needs the book and don't have the mm-hmm. means to purchase. I have sewn several and, and I have no problem with continuing mm-hmm. to do that in any way that I can inspire. You know, like I said, God's given me this platform to reach women, um, that's mm-hmm. dealing with infertility. And I thank God for it. You know, this is so out of my comfort zone and my element that I'm used to because I've spent the last 20 something years in the criminal justice field. And Mm. when he gave me the title of this book, I wasn't Mm. even pregnant yet. Mm. And so I was like, okay, Lord, is this the year? Because you're giving me the title of a book because it's like everything that God did, he had me document it. And I didn't mm. know for what purpose. And literally the Friday before I celebrated my first Mother's Day, I sat down at the computer mm-hmm. and wrote this book in six hours. Ooh. In six hours? Six hours. That was the Holy Spirit. <laughs> exactly. Wow. I got really? up the next morning and I told my husband, I said, I think I just wrote a book. I'm not sure, but wow, I knew that he had given my household this testimony Mm -hmm. but i knew he didn't intend for it to to stay here so Mm. i just thank god like i said for the opportunity to share at any time um again it's so out of my comfort zone me writing a book me even doing any Mm -hmm. kind of speaking or anything but i tell you being in the criminal Mm -hmm. justice field occasionally Mm -hmm. i have to get on the stand and testify in court and mm. I do it with a level of confidence because it's the career that I've done all these years. Mm-hmm. But the Holy Spirit spoke to me just recently, like a few months ago. And he said, with that same boldness, yes. I need you to take a stand and be a witness for me mm. about my goodness and faithfulness and what I can do. My God. And you are doing just that. <laughs> God is, and how can people, for those of, for those people who want to, how can they sow a seed into your life? Um, I do have a cash app. Um, it's M O B W L L C. Um, and, um, again, you know, just reach out to me on Facebook. And if there's a way that I can sow something, then like I said, direct (laughs) message me, direct message me. Um, I will, you know, love to share my book with whoever you know needs a copy and, and don't have access to it or can't get to wow. it. Wow. You are such a giver. Um, can you repeat that cash app again? I'm trying to type it up, please. M O B W L L C. L L C. All right. There it is. Let me tell you guys, every time that I sew, and I don't just sew only into my church, but I also ask God who to sew into and where to sow seed. Let me tell you, every time that I give, and I give into other people's ministries as well, every time I give, like maybe one or two days later, I get back. And so the Bible says it is better to give than to uh, than to receive. And let me tell you, Celeste didn't tell me to do this at all. I did this on my own. She didn't tell me to have them sow a seed into my ministry. <laughs> so I'm letting you know this this is me. I'm a believer in sowing seed and, and I love to give. And, um, I believe it keeps, uh, 
when you when you're giving, you know, you when you're always giving, I believe that more comes back to you, and that's how you just Absolutely. keep the blessings flowing. And um, and I support people's vision. I believe in them. I support them, and then some people support me, and so that gift of giving keep, just keeps going on and on and on and on. So, uh, Melanie said, "I will be sowing." God has already spoken the amount. Amen. Praise God. And for those of you who will be sowing into her life, God, we just ask you to bless them in advance, increase them on every side, Father God, in the name of Jesus. You give seed to the sower, bread to the eater, and we just speak increase and that all of their needs will be met, Lord God, their spiritual needs, emotional needs, and their financial needs in the name of Jesus, Lord God. And we just thank you for their miracle right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you and we praise you because me and Celeste, we put our faith together, Lord God, all of us on this broadcast, Lord. You said one can chase a thousand to flight and two can chase 10,000. So God, all of us are in agreement on this thing concerning the fruit of the womb. There are people that have been waiting for so long. So we just thank you that we are standing on your word that says you make your people a happy mother of children. And you said we shall be fruitful and multiply, God. We thank you for opening up wombs, my God. We just thank you for your anointing, Lord God. And we break the back of barrenness and infertility. And we declare that God has the last say so concerning you. we silence we silence the voice of the enemy one thing that stood out to me is when she began to talk about her family and some people who were not in agreement with where her faith was there were some people where their faith wasn't where her faith was and god gave her the vision god gave her the promise yes she had to stand on it no matter what the gainsayers said no matter what uh people that were doubters said but she had to uh, make up her own mind and she had to be fully persuaded that what god spoke he was able to perform so i want you to know today that with god shall nothing be impossible even if you don't have a uterus even if you've had a hysterectomy God. With god, yes shall nothing be impossible god can recreate if he's a creator right If God is a creator, he created Adam and Eve. He created the heavens and the earth. God is a creator. So if you need a womb, he can give you a womb. And God is so good. I always say this. If you don't have a womb, with the power of God, with the hand of God, he can supernaturally uphold that baby in you and you don't even have a womb. Because God doesn't need what man needs to make something happen. Amen. He's a supernatural God. That's super natural meaning it's unexplainable by human nature meaning science can't put its hand on it science won't get it because it's a miracle it's a supernatural work of the lord amen amen um, amen huh? oh oh look oh peter being so considerate he's talking about the bible study thing uh she already missed her bible study oh. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had conversations about that late, late last night <laughs> oh, no, it was central standard time and eastern and i'll tell you i'm reading some of the you. comments and i am absolutely just blessed by some of the comments that i'm reading and um, i hope that people continue to reach out to me again i'm going to go back and look at this um this segment okay. and get some of these names and i have a list of barren women that i'm i'm praying mm. for that I pray over. And when I fast, I'm fasting for them because again, you know, God's given me this platform and I'm Mm. a willing vessel. However he can use me in whatever aspect in sharing this. Um, You know, when I was pregnant with my son, as you can imagine, with it being my first pregnancy, not knowing what to expect, the enemy tried to attack me, you know, Mm. emotionally and mentally because I was just like, oh my gosh, am I going to go full term with this? Mm. But God gave me this scripture and he told me, and you know, it was Genesis 12 too. He said, speak that over your son mm. every single day. And even to today, every single day I speak it over him. And I knew that nations would know his name. And that is what wow. God had given me in that Genesis 12 two verse that I speak over him every single day. I'll make of thee a great nation. Thou shalt be blessed. Thy name shall be great and thou shalt be a blessing. And I tell him that every single day because I spoke it over him in my womb. And even when the enemy tried to attack me and say, this pregnancy is not going to happen or this is going to happen. And, you know, people would ask me, what, what are you going to do if you don't have a, 
if you don't have a boy? And I said, that's what God has promised me. I only have this name that God <laughs> has given me. So yes. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not coming up with the girl name. And it's so funny <laughs> because when we found out we were having a boy, my husband and I literally had a three second conversation about him being a junior. And I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, your name doesn't have Simeon in it anywhere. Oh. So <laughs> mm. he's not going to be a junior, <laughs> but he yeah. does have my husband and my father, my late father-in-law's first name, which is Terry, but he's Terry Simeon Marshall. And um, we call him Trey because he's the third Terry in the family. No, oh, that is awesome. I have been blessed. Thank you for sacrificing uh, your, your Bible study. You had to minister tonight. <laughs> So you have an excuse if they, where were you at Celeste? How come you didn't come to Bible study? She was ministering. She had a ministry assignment tonight. So that's why. <laughs> my husband was like, hey, you're still talking about church. So it's all good. That's what my husband said. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That is, that is so true. That is true. Um, that's a duty got a word. Your husband got a word for the people. Oh, my, Peter's, Peter asked me if your husband has a word for the people. No, he is actually on the other end of the house with my son. Both of them are about like I am about being camera shy, but hey, God okay. is breaking us all out of our comfort zone because this is a platform that he's given our family. And again, it's our mm -hmm. family testimony, but I knew once I started sharing it very early that, you know, God didn't intend for it to stay here. And I'm going to do my part as that willing vessel to share, to encourage mm -hmm to remind people that even if your faith dwindles down to that, the size of a mustard wow. seed, and it is wow. tiny. And I was there mm -hmm. in this 10 year mm -hmm. period. But again, mm -hmm. it's still enough for God to do the miraculous. That, okay, I do too. Go ahead. That, you sure? Okay, well, I'll go. You go ahead. Don't forget it. I don't want you to forget. Okay. No, you go first then. You might forget. <laughs> no, you go. Okay, I'll go first. So that just blessed me what you just said because sometimes we think that our faith is not high enough to get the promise and we think that now that's what's hindering the baby from coming through but right. like you said even if it's as small as a mustard seed jesus said it can move mountains yeah and so that that just that's staying with me like you you helping me on some things that i'm going through in my personal life and you know <laughs> if it's a i'm sorry Peter. oh you can go ahead no let me talk well you go ahead. You keep talking no you can go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> i'm just gonna say you know with god's promises you know don't put him on a timetable. Just know that you've heard from him. And regardless of what it looks like, regardless of what the circumstances are, you know, just remember the promise. And again, that mustard seed faith, because that is truly, truly what got me through. Good. Um, concerning you, the name, like how you chose the name and you stood on it and you stood on the name. It, it, it reminded me of the scriptures where the angel Gabriel appeared to Mary and he said, his name shall be called, you know, Emmanuel, mm -hmm. or his name shall be called John, or his name shall be called Samson, because they have a purpose for that name. And when they grow yes. older, they're going to match their purpose with that name. And you mm -hmm. have to carry out that name because the name of the Lord is a strong tower. So names are so important. So it's very important for us to stick with the name that God has given us to name our children. Amen. Not because it sound cute or because it's pretty, but because of the meaning behind it and what they will become because of that name. So mm. I'm glad you stuck to what the Lord gave you and you carried it out, <laughs> just like how John had to carry it out. Otherwise, you know, he was, he was struck dumb until he carried out that name. Then the string of his tongue was loose and he was able to speak because he completed what the Lord had told him to do concerning the name. So good job on it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> uh, Amen. All right, guys, we are going to be wrapping this up shortly. I know that you have been blessed because I was blessed. I get so excited when I hear people's testimonies. Um, one thing that I did want to say was, um, uh, Lord, bring it back to my mind. Um, help me, Holy Spirit. <laughs> he just laid hands on me. <laughs> um it was it was related to faith um oh god help me help me god bring it back to my mind i pray in the name of jesus um what was i about to say um gosh i really don't remember what i was about to say it was related to faith while you was talking um something had came to my mind to mm. um to bring up what was it 
Everybody pray. Hit in prayer. Come on, y'all. Let's pray. Let's try ourselves up. Come on. It's all right. Well, it'll look like that. Watch. Soon as I disconnect, it's probably going to pop in my head like, oh, yeah. That's y'all, what I was going to talk about. Y'all in prayer. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. So we just thank God for um, the time and the fellowship that we've been able to spend uh, on faith, mountain moving broadcast. Our theme tonight was about how our faith is going to move mountains. Um, Whatever God promised you, you can take it to the bank. You will be able to redeem it and you will be able to go and cash it in. Um, She is a a testament of that. I'm a testament of that. Oh, it just came back to my mind. Thank you, Jesus. So what I was going to say was, um, uh, (laughs) how we know it? Stop looking at you. You should see how my husband looking at me. It was about, stop, don't don't do that. Faith and mountains. It was about, um, it just left my mind again. That don't make no sense. But anyway, God, we just thank you and we praise you for this broadcast and for um, the listeners. We thank you for the spirit of expectation. We thank you for igniting us, Lord God. We just thank you for your anointing. We thank you for breakthrough, God. We thank you for her obedience. What I was going to say was the areas that God, um, well, the areas that we oftentimes suffer in, the areas that we struggle in, uh, God will oftentimes use those areas and he will get the glory. He will use you mightily in the areas that you have struggled Thank in. That's you, what I was going to say. It kept it kept Thank coming you, from my mind, but it came back as I began to pray. So God wants you to know that uh, what you're going through, it's not in vain. What you're, what you're going through, um, you can count it all joy when you're going through divers temptation, knowing that the trying of your faith, it's actually working the purpose and the plan of God in you, okay? Yes. Um, Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, for I know the plans that I have for you. So let me tell you that God knows exactly what he's doing. Your life is in his hands and um, he will use you and your story your marriage uh, to be a testimony to the world. We are called to be lights, lights in the world. We are the light of the world. And uh, so he will broadcast you. He will allow you to go through something where people will be like, it wasn't nothing but God that did that for them. Mm. He will allow you to go through something where people can't deny that it was God. Amen. So amen, he's going to get the glory out of your life. I want you to know that God will get the glory. There shall be glory after this. Don't give up and keep the faith. This is Andrea Scott from Pregnancy by Faith. Thank you so much for joining us. And this Thank is our beautiful Peter. sister, Celeste Marshall <laughs> and <laughs> Peter Scott. Thank you guys have. again. And so sorry for the delay technology. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> We understand. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. You guys connect with her. Go to her website. Um, say your website again, woman of God. Memoirs of a barren woman dot com. Dot com. And you can connect with her on social media right here on Facebook. She does have a page as well. Her name is Celeste Marshall. Yes. Thank you. All right. All right. God bless you. Bless you. Keep in touch too. Yes. Definitely. Good night. All right. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye, everybody else.